Being able to use Excel to store data up to a million plus lines will mean that we will need to filter some of that data away so that we're not interested in seeing all of it at one time. Now, although our data here in employees actually only equals 105 employees, we can still filter out some of those employees. Now, the filtering works on a column basis. So we would look at, for example, street or town and city and filter out values that don't match those that we're searching for. Now, the first step to filtering is to activate the auto filter icons. And that's done from the home ribbon where we have sort and filter and choose filter. And you can see that nothing actually happens other than these little drop down arrows appearing at the top of every column. What they will allow you to do, if we take the town city as an example, is to click in, view all the unique town and cities. So these are the unique values, regardless of how many times they appear in the list. If they appear at least once, then they appear in this filter option. And what I can do is remove the tick from a select all, and then hand pick those towns that I wish to filter by. So effectively, I'm looking for people who live in Durham, Hartlepool, Leeds, and Manchester. OK. And the filtering takes place. Now I know there's filtering in place because the row numbers go blue. So there's my indication. In the status bar at the bottom left, it says however many of however many records. So in this case, 33 of 106 records. And the filter on the column that is being filtered by has a little filter icon. So instead of a drop down arrow as the others have, we have a filter icon on the town city column. Now you can compound your filters by choosing another column. So this town city filter will be in place. And even if I go to another column, such as, for example, date of birth, where I see all the unique years. So I could pick an individual year, or you can expand out, for example, 1980. And I can see December within there, 1976 as February and August. So it's based on the data within that column. Or I can go to date filters. And there are some pre-built filters, such as this month, next month, last month, next quarter. But those options really are based on sales data that is up to date. These are dates of birth and the youngest person is in their 20s. But we could go for a between option and say everyone whose date of birth is after January the 1st, 1971 and is before December the 31st, 1978. Then OK. And that filter is now in place, got a little filter icon on there. And we have less employees, we've only got 12. So all of these employees meet both criteria. So they have to fall into both camps, both the town filtering and the date of birth filtering. Should you wish to remove any filtering, then you go to the filter that you wish to remove. So town city in this case, and we can clear the filter from town city, or we can make further changes, perhaps choosing different towns. So let's clear that filter. That will bring all the town filtering back and we're now only filtering on the date of birth filter. So people born between 1971 and 1978 and there are 22 of them. To remove the date of birth filter, I simply go in there and choose clear date of birth filter or I can go into date filters between and actually edit the current contents. So there are a number of options. If I have a number of filters in place and notice they do compound, so that filter works with that filter, works with that filter, and I want to remove them all at once, I can simply go to sort and filter and clear, and that will clear all filters that are in place. And then I can see all my data has returned because the row numbers are now black and green when highlighted, but they're not blue. And I could remove these little drop lists if I don't want them. I go into sort and filter, and just click in the filter option again, and that turns off the filtering capability. So any of your columns can be filtered by simply turn on the filtering, which is done on the home ribbon or the data ribbon, where we can turn on filtering. That places the little drop down arrow, which then gives you the capability to filter. Let's choose the salary this time. There's been a numeric field, it shows all the unique values, or we can go into number filters and choose equals, not equal, greater than, greater than, or equal to, less than, etc. All the comparison filters there are built in straightforward English, so you know what you're going to get. So I'm going to go less than 20,000. So anybody who earns less than $20,000 will now appear in my filter set, and there are 52 of those employees. And you can look down the salary and see that that is true. 
And then in the sex column, I'm going to choose one. So remove two effectively. So that's only males. Okay. And I'm now looking at males who earn less than 20,000 and there are 25 of them. Once you've done some filtering, you can actually take a copy of that data by selecting it all, which is control A. Let's insert a new sheet. Back in employees, with it still selected, I'm going to do a copy. So control C, I can then paste. And you'll see that we only get the 25 employees that match the criteria of the filter. So even though we did a control A to select all, it only selects those visible rows. But when we then copy and paste into a new sheet, it pastes them in without all the gaps and without all the filtering. So it's a useful way of effectively taking an extract from your data. Not so dramatic when there's only 106 to start with, but if there were thousands or tens of thousands, or even reaching the million, this is a great way of filtering that data down into a more workable data set.